This is the second part of uh, strategic uh, foresight um, um, part of, of this course. Uh, and now here we're talking about uh, the context. We are talking about how uh, strategic foresight uh, is specially needed uh, for this type of the age what we are living right now and in the next uh, decades. Let me explain. It all starts with the fact that uh, our socioeconomic systems, uh, but also our technologies, appears in waves. And these waves are 40 to 60 year long waves that started by the inauguration of Industrial Revolution. And now we are at the stage when one era, one wave, uh, has sort of ended and the other one is appearing. We're moving from fifth to sixth wave. And as always, between those waves, there is a crisis. In this case, it's been a financial crisis that started essentially 2008 and which has not ceased as yet. But we are also seeing that as a result of these changes uh, and this uh, uh, crisis, uh, something very new, very different is appearing, which was the case also in the previous waves. We just need to look what happened in the 1970s uh, when we had the oil crisis and where we had the technology which started to then to appear, which then became a digital revolution. When we look this type of um, uh, sequence in the waves, this type of the development where one wave gives away to another, as in nature, we see that now there is a new interest uh, on the top of digitalization, which I call uh, resource efficiency. So intelligent resource efficient technologies are the ones that will going to prevail in this next wave reaching to the mid of this century. And it will find all kinds of application in terms of material efficiency, energy efficiency, but also in the efficiency how we are using the human capital. The, the real tension of our times and in the future is about how the nature, human and technologies are interacting. And this is particular because we know how much there is a challenge for us to decrease the, um, uh, the pressure that we are creating to our nature and environment. Now, we're looking for intelligent solutions. When we, when we look which kind of a platforms we are building for that, we see all kinds of uh, very interesting developments in bioeconomy and technology in resource efficient technologies, in renewable technologies, in health technologies, and so forth. That creates us new possibilities to create a better life, but also to use less of our precious and very finite resources. On the other hand, we have two key megatrends that uh, are imposing us a lot of things. The first one is is uh, globalization and the globalization in the next way, which is not the one that we have seen before. Uh, then we have also uh, demographic change, which we haven't seen in human history because we are living now through the age in the coming decades where those age cohorts that are over 65 are becoming predominant in our society. The estimate is 
that from 20 years from here, it's almost like a one third of the population in countries like Finland or other Western countries that are 65 or older. Add to that longevity so that people are living longer and what we get is a very, very different kind of a social structure in our societies. Down there at our, our Trinity, we also have a lot of things that are imposing different social trajectories. Uh, we have the complexity, we have the environmental problems, but we also have people that are much more educated than ever, knows much more about the world, simply because we have this digital communication system. That all makes a very different social and political structure and are contesting our present forms of democracy, for instance. Now, the big thing which is happening in the coming decades is the global power structure where we can estimate that it will be shifting towards south and towards east. Simply in economic terms, we can estimate that over 60% of the global economic weight will be in non-OECD countries from 40 years from here. And that is a dramatic change. We have an experience in the globe in last 250 years. Now, then there are some other uh, confining issues such as uh, 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 resource scarcity. Here is a one uh, a graph demonstrating uh, through simulation that if the climate change is not going to be harnessed in the way that stabilizes the atmosphere. If that is the case, then we're going to have a lot of drought, a lot of uh, uh, lack of precipitation, particularly those parts of the world that uh, where there are lots of agricultural activities. So it's going to be a lot of constraints that will be pushed to humanity as a whole. And again, this is the message, to take seriously this issue around the resource efficiency and climate protection. Then there is another uh, road which is changing very much the way uh, society operates, and that comes from artificial intelligence. Now there are quite dramatic uh, estimates of, of how much of the current work will be replaced by machines. And machine learning has been taking a huge leap in the last five to ten years. Uh, I believe we will f see a new fields of job and work creation as we go further and develop our societies. But nevertheless, the transformation is going to be a major one. All in all, the transformation comes then from a physical, from biological, from AI added digital and social, you might also say spiritual side, all of them pushing our technologies and thus ultimately pushing our societies to change and move forward. Finland is a special case because in previous eras, in previous, previous waves, we were exceptionally successful in many ways. And that has created a certain tension for us to a challenge indeed for us to, to, to make a bold moves forward. That's why Finland had a 
right after the financial crisis. We had a seven years, very lean years, where our economy, economy was in many ways basically stuck. But we have a lot of good things in there. We have a 500 years of bioeconomy of fiber knowledge that we now need to turn into something which is useful in the future because we are not probably using papers as much as we're using today in the future. But we need to look for the new materials uh, when we are particularly replacing the non-renewable uh, materials in our physical environment. We are also going much more into the digital services from, uh, from just providing digital goods. And we are definitely moving in Finland to get the more stake in the clean tech industry because our machinery knowledge has been there for uh, more than a hundred years and that needs to be changed now, particularly because we are coming more and more international. And for the aging, it is also a great asset because Finland is in the forefront in this demographic transition and maybe we can find societal and also technological means uh, to uh, manage these maturing and aging societies. There are also, in our working life, uh, another type of fundamental uh, um, changes occurring, and that is much to do with the human skills and human know-how. Uh, we are seeing a lot of changes in the working conditions and in the, in the conditions for people to be a part of the working life. There seems to be a flux of different types of skills that needs to be there for any human being, for them to master uh, the abrupt changes that are happening and the requirements that is needed in the working life. But that's a part of the change as we are, are, are seeing that. And that takes it also that we are actually seeing a very new modes of organizations. Uh, we are ripping off some of the hierarchies that have been there in the past. And we are finding a new and more effective means to use the, the human capacity, which is in the people in those organizations. The economy itself is going to change as well. The economy will be more what we call now a circular economy, where the materials, services, and in, indeed human skills are much more in the flux much more in the interchange. Again, to increase the resource efficiency which is needed. When we look today, we're still very much uh, squandering our resources in many ways, not taking advantage of how one material, when it comes to end of its life, that could be used as a raw material for the next. So, all in all, we're going to see a lot of different uh, changes, fundamental changes and surprises. This coming decades has to do with a lot of surprises and for that we certainly need strategic foresight.